Hello everyone, happy Wednesday to you. It's actually Monday evening that I'm filming this video. I have my granddaughter on Wednesday, so I'm not able to film that day. But I wanted to do a video on the subject of generosity because being generous can be a blessing to your soul. Um, it, it really is truly better to give than to receive. Um, I was happening to go to Lowe's today and I saw a homeless man, which I actually haven't seen a lot lately, but I saw a homeless man sitting kind of by Walmart and um, I remembered that I had a backpack ready for a man in my back trunk and it has a little bit of money and it was some supplies and so I was able to give that to him and that really brought more joy to me I'm sure than it did him even though he was very appreciative about it so you know giving is really a blessing within your soul not only to the person but to yourself and the father remembers your you know uh, gifts and he gives rewards for them Okay, so I thought a wonderful verse uh, that I um, found from Winston Churchill summed up something good. It says, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. And that is so true. If we're tight-fisted, um, we don't get a lot in return because, you know, it, it just doesn't come back on us. Uh, the Lord blesses when we bless, and he loves to see a cheerful giver. So I'm going to go over some verses on how you can be blessed and you can be encouraged to be generous. So it says, Isaiah 32, 8, good people will be generous to others and will be blessed for all they do. And I believe that the Lord does bless people for giving, whether they even are a Christian or a non-Christian, I think he even blesses non-Christians for giving, um, you know, if their heart is in the right place about it. And also he uses his own people to bless others. He may put it in our heart to bless someone. It wasn't even our idea, but the Lord is using us. So when we have that feeling, we need to obey because that is the Lord prompting us. And then it says in Proverbs 14, 21, it is a sin to despise one's neighbors. Blessed are those who help the poor. And I think we're going to see more and more of that with rising inflation, rising gas rates. I was listening to another channel and someone had spoke about um, them living near um, a trailer park and those people were re-asking neighbors for just common things like soap or toilet paper because they weren't, you know, with the gas prices going as high as they were, they weren't making enough money to buy essentials. So I think we're going to see more of that. So if you have leftover, you know, I encourage you to give. And then it says, um, a curse will come upon those who close their eyes to poverty. Proverbs 28, 27. Now we cannot help everyone. That is a fact. And we should not feel guilty about that. We literally cannot do it, but we can help someone. And so if you see someone in need and you are able to give them something, even if it is a bottled water, you know, that is great. Um, I remember years and years ago, um, when they used to kind of, and I think sometimes they still do this where they'll drop kids off to sell magazines, which I really think is a farce. I don't even think it's like a legit thing, but it was really, really hot. And, you know, I remember our family, you know, giving water to one of these people that were waiting on the curb to be picked up. And they were so grateful uh, because they had been left out in the heat. So even a small you know, thing like a bottled water can be a blessing to someone. And then it says, Ecclesiastes 11, 1, 2. Give generously, for your gifts will return to you later. Divide your gifts among many, for you do not know what risks lie ahead. And so here it is. Give generously, for your gifts will return to you later. If you hear twinkling in the back, tinkling, 
and movement is because uh, it's evening and my cats, this is their my workout room and they come in here and sleep so they don't bother us at nighttime. And so now they're running around in their tube and all that. So excuse the noise if you hear that. And so then um, in Luke 6.38, and this is Jesus' words, if you give, you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full measure, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more and running over. Whatever measure you give in giving, large or small, it will be used to measure what is given back to you. So here he's saying, really it is, you know, if we're tight-fisted, we're going to have tight-fisted back to us. If we're generous, we're going to have generosity to us. And so, you know, remember that principle. And then it says in Luke 69, uh, I tell you, use your worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. In this way, your generosity stores up a reward for you in heaven. So even when it's saying to benefit others and make friends, you know, a lot of times we, our testimony starts with us giving to someone showing kindness, compassion, helping someone, and it gives an opportunity for us to share the gospel. So I look at that verse in that way also. And then in Proverbs 3, 9, it says, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything that your land produces. And so um, I definitely believe in tithing. Um, you know, I know that from the Old Testament, it was a certain percentage, you know, we give, um, we always still go with the Old Testament and, and over, and we don't miss it. It's, uh, it's the first thing that we pay out, and the Lord has always provided for our needs. Um, regardless, it doesn't matter if it's a time of, you know, bad times or good. It's a priority for us to do this, and the Lord has always provided for us. So, you know, don't have your tithe be the first thing to go. Have that be the first thing to pay out. Like it says, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the best part of everything that your land produces. And, you know, so I believe in honoring with the first part of your income and then paying your bills after that. And, of course, being wise with your money and budgeting also. I believe very much in budgeting and knowing your income and, you know, writing the tithe in just like it's a bill so that it's always there. There's no excuses and paying that along with your bills and, and managing finances biblically. And then it says um, another in 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 11, it says, Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each make up your own mind in how too much you should give. Okay, this is the New Testament. Don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves the person who gives cheerfully. And God will generously provide all that you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. God is the one who gives seed to the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will give you many opportunities to do good and he will produce a great harvest of generosity in you. <clears throat> yes, you will be enriched so that you can give even more generously. And when we take when we take your gifts to those who need who need them, they will break out in thanksgiving to God. And that's Paul talking about that um, about people who receive the blessing break out in thanksgiving to God. And so notice it says, make up e e each one in your own mind what you're going to give, and don't give out of com you know compulsion like I have to do this, or reluctantly give as a cheerful giver. Be like you're cheerful about giving and you're excited about it and you know you're looking forward to blessing someone many years ago i was not good about giving the you know the monetary part i didn't i was a new christian and really didn't understand the tithing portion of it and basically um i was always very good with acts of service 
and um, that's even something that I is my love language that I like back to me but I was always I've always been a person who's done things for people or helped people but when it came to actually giving money maybe to an organization or things like that I was you know not as good and the Lord has worked in my heart and, and I prayed to him about this and now that is, um, you know, been a thing that I've added on to the uh, goods and service, you know, services to people. And so the Lord had to change my heart too, because there's like sometimes distrust with me, with organizations, things like that. And so I always try to look up organizations and make sure they are with like EFCA and, you know, Evangelical Financial Accountability, I think it's something like that, Council and so they take a look at their each uh, organization's finances and make sure they're doing it up to a biblical standard. So I choose people like that a lot of time. Well, I'm going to read two more and then I will be done. Uh, there is much to say in the Bible on this and I'm just going over a few verses. And then it says in Hebrews 6.10, God is not unfair. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other Christians as you still do. God absolutely will not forget what you've done. He notices every single thing. In fact, the Bible says he notices even when you give a cup of water and you will re receive your just reward for that. And then it says, um, the very last one that I will read is Proverbs 11, 24 through 25. It says, it is possible to give freely and become more wealthy, but those who are stingy will lose everything. The generous prosper and are satisfied, and those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. And I think that's a good verse to leave it on, to remember that the generous prosper and not only just financially i'm not one of these get rich you know quick type of you know things there's a lot of that teaching going on god will bless you in your spirit uh, we don't look to get things monetarily ever we're looking we don't even think about it we're just giving and the lord is always provided for our needs and so uh but we are always blessed within our soul when and that is what i'm talking about is the lord blessing us within our soul blessing us with joy maybe a new friend you know um peace that we followed through with what god had us do um you know a lot of times the person will say something like oh i was praying to god and then you you know um gave it, my, my husband was at a pharmacy one time and a man did not have enough money to pay for his daughter's medication. And, you know, my husband said, okay. And he ended up paying for the whole prescription so he could have some money, you know, to take home with him. And so the guy was so thankful. And, you know, I think, I believe that man had told him that he had been praying about how to provide for that. So when we answer those tuggings at our heart, we're often answering God and what he is wanting us to do. So don't ever forget that, that those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. I hope that you have a wonderful day and I will be back Thursday with a new video. God bless.